everyone. Welcome to our first practice video as we consider what does it look like for us to spend time with Jesus day by day. As we all adjust to life in lockdown, many of us have been looking back on the shape of our lives before this thing hit. We've been reflecting on the days whenever we were way too distracted to pray, whenever we were too busy to spend time with Jesus, whenever we were living off other people's spirituality, the sense of restlessness, the sense of longing for something more has taken over many of our lives. And with that, we at the Vineyard have been returning back to our two key questions. Jesus, what do you see? And Jesus, what do you say? And in this desert moment, we recognise an invitation from Jesus for us to get back to the basics, the basics of prioritising his presence and pursuing his practices. What would it look like for us to not miss this moment, but for us to be able to look at the life of Jesus and sense his invitation to follow him once again? What would it look like for us to arrange our lives once again so that Jesus' lifestyle becomes our new normal. What if we didn't miss this moment? What if we actually deliberately, intentionally in this moment, maybe more than ever, learnt to follow Jesus and practice his way? What if we invited his Holy Spirit to shape us and form us into his likeness? What would it look like for us to learn to abide in him once again and allow his fruitfulness to take over our lives? What would it look like for us to develop a practice toolbox that we are able to draw upon, not just for this moment, but also for the future, a future of us intentionally following Jesus and seeing the life of his kingdom demonstrated all around us. What does it look like for us to follow Jesus in this moment? As a church, every Sunday, we are gonna be inviting you to engage in a new spiritual practice with us. A practice that is going to be lifted from the lifestyle of Jesus. A practice that will lead you into his presence. And a practice that will encourage you to put his ways into the rhythm of your life. A practice that will allow you to be formed into the ways of Jesus and empowered into the ways of his kingdom. We're going to be sending that out through 321 every Sunday. We're also going to be talking about it in our Sunday evening communion services. What does it look like for us to engage in a practice-based spirituality where we learn to follow Jesus in this moment? So I want to take a few moments to introduce you to our first practice, the practice of spending time with Jesus. In Luke's gospel, his biography of the life of Jesus, we read in nine occasions that Jesus withdrew from crowds. He withdrew from the busyness of his ministry to get away from it all and to spend time with the Father, to be with him in intimate communion. This is a key practice for Jesus. And so it is to be a key practice for us. Jesus needed this space, this space of intimate communion. And we really, really need it too. For the past year, we as a church have been sending you out an email called 321 every Sunday. In 321, we send out uh, daily Bible readings. We send out three reflection questions based on our Sunday teaching. Uh, we send out uh, two prayers, a morning and an evening prayer, and also a spiritual practice for us to engage in. 321 provides the framework for us to spend time with Jesus every single day. And I just want to walk you through what it looks like for you to use 321 in the context of your daily life. If you do this, um, already, if using 321 is a regular rhythm for you, can I encourage you to keep going? Um, in a few moments, I'm going to talk about what it looks like for you to potentially grab another moment in your day for you to be able to spend a further time with Jesus. But if this is new for you, can I, um, I just want to take a moment just to walk you through what it would look like to do this, to find a moment, an intentional moment for you to rest in Jesus, for you to be with him and for you to practice a familiar friendship with him. To spend time with Jesus, there are four key elements. And those elements are silence, their engagement with the scriptures, their reflection questions, and also time of prayer. Traditionally, this is known in the church as the daily office. And through 321, we have been encouraging us all to engage 
in these four significant rhythms at the start of our day. We reckon that spending time with Jesus, the best time to do it is in the morning, first thing before you do anything else, to prioritize time with him before your responsibilities kick in, before family life kicks off, and also before your work begins, to be able to spend time with him at the start of your day, the most important thing you do happening at the first moment of your day. And so with that, let me just walk you through what it looks like for you to spend time with Jesus. Firstly, it kicks off with the moment of being still, of being silent. So can I encourage you, grab your Bible, uh, grab your phone so you can get three, two, one, and find a quiet moment and a quiet space in your day. Find a comfortable seat, take a seat in it, and sit up straight, close your eyes, and breathe in and breathe out. And simply sit for a few moments of stillness and silence. Silence is something that we don't do very often. It's sometimes difficult to find moments to be still and to be silent. And yet silence is so important whenever we learn to spend time with Jesus. And why? Because in silence, we are able to rest into our true identity. So often we can think that our, ident our identity is based on what we do, what we produce, what we achieve, or how we try to prove ourselves to people, when actually our true identity is found in being a son or a daughter of the king. And in silence, we can simply just breathe this identity in and allow, us, allow it to take hold of our lives once again. We can learn to rest in it. So before we get to work, before any of our responsibilities kick in, in silence, we are able to rest into our true identity. As you learn to sit in silence, you might find that your mind will begin to wander a little bit. That's totally normal. Don't worry about that. If your mind does begin to wander, can I encourage you just to utter out the name of Jesus? Just whisper it into the stillness, just to allow your mind to be drawn back to him. In silence, we allow ourselves to focus our attention on Jesus. Remember, our attention is the beginning of our devotion. And so as we sit in silence, we focus on him. We focus our attention and our love on him. Before the distractions of the day, before the list of things that we need to get through, in stillness and silence, we're able to focus our attention on Jesus, resting in him and becoming more and more aware of his presence. So as you begin to get used to this, um, try it out for maybe, maybe two minutes or so. And as you begin to weave this rhythm into the course of your everyday life, you might wanna add a few more seconds or even a few more minutes of silence into your day as you rest in Jesus in the stillness. The second element of spending time with him is found in the scriptures. So grab your Bible, uh, turn to the daily scripture reading that is lifted from three to one that day. But before you read the scriptures, take a moment to pray a really simple prayer that you will be familiar with. It is the prayer, come Holy Spirit. And we pray this prayer really to prepare our hearts in anticipation and expectation that we are gonna hear the voice of Jesus through his spirit as we read through his scriptures. So pray that prayer and then begin to dive into the scriptures that morning. Read it slowly, take it in. Don't rush through the teaching. At the minute we're exploring the book of Acts together through our daily readings. What a brilliant book for us to be reading as a community right now. So read this account of the early church slowly, take it in. You might want to read it a few times. Um, you might want to read it out loud. You might want to scribble down some notes as you read it. Whatever you do, don't rush through the scripture reading. Take your time with it. Take it all in. Feast on God's word and listen out to the voice of Jesus. Listen out to what he is saying to you directly in that moment. The third element of spending time with Jesus is found in reflection. Lift one of the reflection questions from three, two, one that week. And just ponder it. Reflect upon it sit with it with Jesus. You might want just to rest in that moment and just allow the Holy Spirit just to lead your thinking, your imaginations and your thoughts. Or you might want to have a bit of a dialogue with Jesus. You might want to speak to him and listen to what he says as you reflect upon these really important questions that will equip you to live in the direction of his kingdom. And finally, take some time to pray and begin by praying with others. This is the shape of life of following Jesus. We live the servant-hearted way. And so pray for others first before you pray for yourself. Pray for our world, pray for this land, 
Pray for your town, your village. Pray for your community, your street, your neighbours, those around you, your workplace, your work colleagues. Pray for those around you. There is so much for us to be praying for right now. So take some time to pray for others first and then begin to pray for yourself. Pray for your family, for those closest to you. Pray for the concerns of your day. There's that thing that you're excited about that day or that thing you're really nervous about that day. Present it to Jesus. Bring it towards him and just invite him to speak into it and to lead you through it. And then close out your time by praying out loud uh, the morning prayer that we write for you every week through 321. This is a great way to close out your time by spending time with Jesus. Just read this prayer out loud as a declaration of who he is, of who you are, and what you've been invited into in the course of the day that you're about to step into. If this is new for you, can I encourage you to give it a go? Try it out every day this week. And even though we're going to be inviting us all to engage in a new spiritual practice next week, can I encourage you, don't stop with this practice. This is like a super habit. It's the foundation that all the other practices will be built upon. So keep going with this one. Don't ever stop spending time with Jesus in the course of your day. In our practice guide, which is on the equip section of our website, you'll find a few adaptions to this practice that will invite your family into it. There's also some adaptions for you if you are on the front line right now and you're considering how on earth do I put in the practices of Jesus whenever life is so stretched for me right now. There's some adaptions in the uh, practice guide for you. But if spending time with Jesus like this is already a regular feature in your day, can I encourage you, keep going with it. But consider this week if you can find another moment, a further moment in your day to spend time with Jesus like this. If you're doing this already in the morning, why not do exactly the same thing also in the evening? Um, you can do exactly the same thing. Enjoy a few moments of stillness and silence. Open up the scriptures. Instead of the daily Bible reading, you can turn to something that you want to read. Or you might want to use the psalm that's lifted out of 3, 2, 1 that week. Take another reflection question. And also you can use the evening prayer as you close out your day and rest once again in your identity as a son and as a daughter of the King. This is such a key practice for us. It's such an important practice for us to do the Jesus thing, to rest with him, to experience time with him, to develop a familiar friendship with him. And as we learn to do the Jesus thing, his identity and his character will be formed in our hearts. It will transform us into his likeness and allow us to live in the direction of his kingdom. Can I really encourage you, have a go at it this week and enjoy the presence of Jesus. Enjoy spending time with him. If I can help you in any way, as you consider what does it look like for me to put the practices of Jesus into the context of my daily life, I'd love to hear from you. Just email me. My email is stuart at laganvalleyvineyard.com and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But can I encourage us all to not miss this moment, to make the most of this opportunity for us to pursue the basic things of prioritising the presence of Jesus and putting his practice into the rhythm of our daily lives. Let's pursue Jesus together. Let's spend time with him this week and let's be formed into his likeness for our sake, yes, but also for the sake of the world. Grace and peace to you all.